Okay, so <clears throat> you guys don't need to know this formula. I'm using the formula so that I can explain what Hooke's law actually means. So Hooke's law states that um, there is a linear proportion, a linear relationship between the amount of force you add to a spring and the amount of extension that the spring has. So this K over here is known as the spring constant. Okay, this X over here, that is the amount of extension that the spring has. And this F, that is the force, force that you use. Okay. <clears throat> So in your lessons on Cambry Learn about Hooke's law, you've got this graph over here. So essentially what Hooke's law means, this equation over here that you guys don't need to know but that I'm using, um, is it works in this area of the graph over here. So as you can see, here we've got the amount of force that we add onto the spring and here we have the amount that that spring extends. So the more force we add to it, the more it extends. Until we reach this point over here. This point here is called the elastic limit. So in this area here, we put on a force and the spring goes down a bit and then we take that force off and the spring goes right back to where it was. However, from this area here onwards, we have reached the limit of that spring. Now, if we add more weight, the spring is going to stretch out but the metal physically is going to change shape. So from this point onwards, our spring is going to be changing shape and it won't be able to just go back to the same length it was. It will now be longer if we keep adding it. So what happens here is the more force we add, the longer it's getting. So here you can see it gets a lot longer with just a little bit of force. So that little amount there is not a lot of force and it just keeps getting longer and at some point you'll see that you need less force in order to make it extend a lot more and at some point over here this spring is going to break so that means that you have gone past the limit of the spring okay <clears throat> so this is the come on this is the graph you guys have in your books. And Hooke's law deals with this part here. It is about this linear relationship. So I am now going to show you guys a PHET simulation called Masses and Springs. So if we click play and it loads. Okay, we only need the intro book. So here we go, I'm just gonna move that. So I'm going to first mark its natural length. So this is how long the spring is. So if we add a weight to the spring, you'll see it starts bouncing up and down. But once it comes to a stop, you'll see that it is longer than what it was. And if we now mark that position, we can measure that distance. So let me take this weight off and instead add a 100 gram weight, wait for it to get to that point. So 100 grams is just about one Newton's worth of force. So if we look back on our um, equation, we have the force equals x. So let me annotate over here. So we have f equals kx. So this is our force. So here, our 100 grams is about one Newton's worth of force. We don't know what K is. And our extension, we can go measure um, by using a ruler. So let's grab a ruler and drag it closer. So here we can see this is about, that's 10 millimeters. It's about 16, 17 millimeters. Okay. So we can go and replace our x, if I can use annotate again, our x over here with 16 millimeters. 
Okay, normally we'd use this in meters, but for our sakes, it doesn't really matter. So we'll take this one, we'll divide it by 16. So our spring constant will then be one over 16 um, newtons per millimeter. So if we know our spring constant, we know how much it stretches for one newton's worth of force. That means that we can calibrate um, our spring in order to, we can literally go right down lines. So here is one newton. So if we add 16 millimeters to that, so about here, that will be if we add two newtons. If we add 16 milliliter, millimeters to that, we'll get to where it's about three newtons. So we can go calibrate things. So by measuring it, you can then go calibrate things. You must just not go past what the spring constant can actually handle. So let's just uh, get rid of all these. <clears throat> so let's put that away. So now that was just using one spring. So let's have one spring with a fairly small spring constant and the other one with a fairly large spring constant. Here you can see we've got the same length of spring, but this one is thicker. So a thicker spring is going to have slightly more resistance. So if we put a hundred gram weight on each of them and we made them stop, then you can see this spring stretched out quite a lot with our hundred grams, whereas this one stretched out only a little. So for thicker springs, we can measure higher forces because um, it has smaller gradients. But smaller springs can measure more accurately smaller um, forces that we add to it. So that's what this shows. So here we have um, two springs. They have the same thickness. And uh, now if we go add our weights to them, and we make them stop, then you can see that the shorter spring um, went down only a little and the longer spring went down more. So longer springs and thicker springs can measure higher forces than shorter springs and thinner springs. So that is essentially what I wanted to show you guys here and how this whole Hooke's Law thing works. Okay. So back to over here. So you now saw more or less how this Hooke's Law thing works um, by giving you guys a good example. So now, if we look at this over here, we have our elastic behavior and then we have our plastic behavior. So the plastic behavior literally means this is where it changes shape. So this is where it sort of turns more clay-like, it can change shape and keep this new shape. Here it will return to its original shape. So the elastic behavior is if you stop applying the force, the spring goes back to its original length. The plastic behavior is if you stop applying the force, the spring no longer goes back to its original length. So that is what um, this graph over here means. <coughs> And from Hooke's law, um, where are we here? So from Hooke's law, um, we can see the different kinds of springs. So this is a shopping website specifically for teachers showing different spring balances. So if you look over here, you can see that here we have on the left side, the first yellow one is a force meter and it's got a fairly longish but thin spring on it and it can measure from 0 to 10 newtons. If you look at the next one it's from 0 to 50 newtons. The next one goes from 0 to 250 and you can see that spring is a lot longer than this first spring was. So they're all graded differently. This one could go to 500. All the way up this end we've got a thick spring and it can go all the way to 3,000 newtons. So the different kinds of springs have different spring constants, and those different spring constants is what we can use to measure forces with. So does this only work for springs? 
No, it works for any kind of elastic. So I can show you over here, this is Instructables, and they have a fairly good um, thing here for how to make your own kind of um, spring balance or force meter. So they use an elastic. So you, you need a normal elastic. They use those washers to keep the elastic in place. And then you need two pipes, one that fits inside the other. Okay. Um, so you make holes in your pipes and then you thread the elastic through both of the pipes like that. And you tie the washer to it so that the, it can't go back. So now uh, he ties a piece of wire to the one end so that you've got something to hook onto other things. And um, now you have this Newton meter. So um, what he now does is he adds the hook to it and then he has specific weights. So 100 grams is roughly one Newton's worth of weight. So he, may, he weighs something that's 100 grams and he hooks it onto the end and then he holds onto his thicker piece of pipe. And then as he lifts it up, you'll see it stretches out. And then he can make a mark on the pipe, on a piece of tape on the pipe, so that he can measure out exactly how many Newtons everything is. So that is essentially your graded scale. Now, the problem is with an elastic is elastics don't last long, they get old. So you can make this force meter using an elastic and it will work very well and it would stay accurate for about a week. After a week, you're gonna have to take off that piece of tape and redo your calibrations again using, again, 100 grams, 200 grams, 50 grams, things like that in order to get your new graded scale and it will be slightly different from your old one. That's why if you go and try and buy um, force meters, they have springs because springs are made of metal and they last a lot longer than an elastic does. Elastics can get stretched out. So this is how you can measure uh, forces. If you wanna measure a pushing force, then you again, hold it on the thick end and you start pushing and where it stops, that is where you're gonna measure it. So where it stops over there, that's where you measure it. <clears throat> so this is essentially how to make a force meter. And this shows you, in essence, how all of the force meters sort of work. Here we have a bunch of force meters and you can see it's one tube inside of another tube. And there's a spring attached to it. And then it has a little place that we can use to measure um, on the inner tube and a graded scale on the outer tube. So there is lots of different ways that this can work. So I'm gonna go back to over here. Um, so a basic force meter, you have a slightly bigger outer cylinder and a smaller inner cylinder and you attach a spring in between the two. So the outer cylinder um, could be either the indicator or it could be the one that has the little marks on it. And then you would have it calibrated due to that spring constant that you had in the beginning. And so if you hook a weight onto it and start pulling, that's what you're gonna be measuring. That difference in length of the spring is what's going to give you the amount of Newtons that you are using. So, I just want to go back to over here. So here you can see that they have different values of what they're graded for. The small one can only go up to 10 Newtons and this big one can go up to 3000. So the point is you mustn't go add more um, weight to one of these than it can actually handle. So this small one can go up to 10 Newtons. So if you try and measure two kilograms with it, that would be about 20 Newtons. Then you're gonna end up breaking that spring. You're gonna take it from the elastic part of the spring into the plastic part and it's gonna change shape 
and that force meter is then going to be utterly useless. So um, things to keep in mind with force meters, they are only graded for certain things. So in terms of that force meter that they showed that you can make yourself, if you add in thicker elastics, then you would end up with a force meter that can measure higher forces. So I went over why force meter use springs instead of rubber elastics. I went over how Hooke's law essentially works. So I am going to do another example from our from our um, please let me know if you can't see this, but from our um, PHET simulation so that we can actually measure the spring constant of two more springs. You guys don't need to know the formula. You guys don't need to know how to apply the formula to work out the spring constant. What you guys do need to know is that certain springs will be able to measure more um, due to certain properties. Something like a thick spring will measure better than, will measure higher forces than a thin spring. A um, longer spring will measure higher forces than a shorter spring. Things like that. So, um, <clears throat> let's try here. So now we have two um, springs over here. So we've got one with a small spring constant, and one with a large spring constant. So, um, okay. In terms of the links that I use in these lessons, at the end of this month, if nothing goes wrong, let's hope, um, the live lesson library will go up on the site. So at the moment it's in beta testing, the IG, I think it's either the IG or the AS biology students are currently testing it out, the live lesson library. Um, but once they're done testing, then it will go live at the end of the month. So all of the live lessons I've done up to now will be on that live lesson library. And every week I will be posting the previous week's lesson on the live lesson library. And in the description of each lesson, there will be all of the links that you can go to, to go find these things that I've been using and to go see for yourself. So then you can play around with them, see them. So it's, it's, it's a week delay, but you will be able to get all of these. Okay, so <clears throat> if we have our force, let me just, there we go. So we have force equals kx. So that's our spring constant. So if we have our force here, these are both one newtons. So we have one newton on this side and we have one newton on this side. And we want to measure that k, so we don't know what k is. And our extension we can go work out. So we have Here we go. We have our ruler. So we can measure the amount that that part's extended. So that's about 20 millimeters. <coughs> <laughs> Sorry. And this one's about 10 millimeters. So here we have 20 and here we have 10. So we can divide this one by 10. So we get our spring constant is about one over 10. And here we get our spring constant is about one over 20. Okay. So what does this actually mean? That means that for every Newton's worth of force that you add to this spring, 10 millimeters is going to be what it stretches out. So we can test that um, by taking this away. We can add our 250 gram weight over here and we can see that it's stretched out to about 25 millimeters. So we have 250 grams, that's 25 newtons and it's stretched out to about 25 millimeters. So once we have our calibrations, you can actually then go work out exactly how large Unknown, unknown forces are. 
So that is the beauty of these things. This is how a force meter works. So this one stretches out to about 20. So this weight over here is then 200, um, oh, 20 newtons because it stretches out 10 millimeters for every one newton. So no, this will be two newtons, so that's 200 grams.